Hey everybody, what's going on? Oh. Hey, what's going on? What's what is T? What is T? How y'all doing? Thank y'all so much. I was finna say double tap shut alive. I guess that doesn't work right here. But definitely shut alive. Okay, this goes out to everybody that said that I, me, MC Shake, it was gonna be late. <laughs> I usually am on CP time, but tonight is not that night. And they just got on me for that. But thank y'all so much. Hey, everybody, thank y'all so much for coming through. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all share the live. Thank you so much. Make sure y'all share the live, share the live, share the live, share the live. All right, so. Hi, I see you worked it out flying to LA. Yes, I did. What are you talking about, Lady Bob? Okay, whatever. Um, so, check this out. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. But okay, um, oh God, I lost train without that face. I'm getting old, I'm getting old, girl, I'm getting old. All right, so tonight we have a very, very special guest. Someone who's internationally known, uh, my homegirl also too. Thank you so much. She is a, uh, a mom, a entrepreneur, a model. Um, she hails from New Orleans, lives in uh, the Atlanta area. Definitely, definitely, thank you so much. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. Definitely, definitely, definitely somebody that has an interesting story to tell. I will, hey, everybody, what's going on? I will preface just a little bit. Please keep the comments acute. <laughs> I myself will be locking and we will have a moderator that will be doing the same thing when it comes to that. If you're in the crayon clueless, y'all know y'all don't. Y'all know y'all not really welcome here. I uh, already too much food with y'all. But we're definitely going to get into it and going to have a good positive interview where we're going to get to talk about a lot of things that's going on. So I'm um, just preface. I know everybody's heard about our favorite, our every, our everyday favorite, uh, stupid penny. I mean, super Saint, who is actually getting married, uh, to, uh, the guy Razor. I know y'all heard about that. Have y'all heard about that? If y'all haven't heard about that. Um, and so the connection that we have here with, uh, Miss Regan Penn with with with, with Miss Okay, that's it. All right, let me give her moderator. All right, so the connection that we have right here. So let me just preface this: the connection that you have with tonight's interviewer, Miss Regan K. Regan K. Is that she is Razor's baby mama? Okay. Um, and so we put it, put it, so that's the connection, but we're going to find out there's so much more to her than just that facet, so much more to her than just that surface. And we want to get, and a lot of times when it comes to the internet and social media, people like to paint a bad picture, um, about people without ever knowing who they are. And so tonight we're going to get into who she is. And, and 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 find out exactly what she feels about what's going on and how the internet is trying to paint and tell her story without her, which is definitely not fair. So what I want y'all to do is definitely share the live. Uh, I will turn the comments off for the interview, just letting y'all know that. Um, and we'll have the interview. And if she wants to at the end of the interview, we will ask you if you want us to have a question or two in the comments. Um, but let's roll it. I mean, it's Messy Monday as we used to do. Remember that? Messy Mondays. And we're just going to get it rolled. All right. So let me see. If she, is, she, I, is she in here? If you're in here, uh, Miss K, please come to the request box so we could definitely, definitely get into it. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Make sure y'all share the live. You don't want your friends to miss it don't because they're going to ask you what happened and all this other good stuff like that. You believe you're biggest. Girl, this is what happened. You should have been here. Okay, there she goes. All right. I'll, uh, I'll put a see y'all talk about me being on time. She wasn't on time, but she's definitely on time. She here when I call. Definitely, definitely. So hey, maybe <laughs> I was on time though. I was definitely on time today. So don't even do that. Hey. Good afternoon. What's going on? Look at this beautiful smile. Thank you. It is so you are so pretty for real. I'm okay. No, 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 no. A lot, no, I'm just saying because a lot of times we talk about the people that's in that game. It's a lot of you know, the makeup, the photoshopping, and all this other good stuff like that. But you are definitely, you're definitely that girl for real. It's a pleasure to yeah. finally kind of meet you on the internet, uh, so to speak. Um, really? Even though, even, we're from New Orleans, though, so we did have uh, run into each other before, but this is like our first internet run into. So it's definitely a pleasure to have you here with me. She's very, very pretty. I can see uh, definitely why you are so successful at what you do. So yeah. without further ado, 
tell us a bit. Let, who let, tell us who are you that you knew, that we need to know the people that don't know. Okay, um, my name is Regan. Um, thank you for getting it right. <laughs> okay, <perfect. laughs> okay. So my name is Regan. Um, a lot of people know me in New Orleans from actually bartending, or they know me from working in a local pharmacy. That's how I was really, really known. Um, bartending at Live and Second and D and um, Showcase, Rain. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. Any, anybody need a bartender, I was in there. Period. Um, Girls like the sip. We like the sip. Definitely like the sip. <laughs> working at a pharmacy on the West Bank. Black home pharmacy. I love that. So that's why I was there. But yeah, um, I started off with Instagram. I had one picture uh, on Second D Corner. It went viral, and we went from there. Um, 2018-ish. So by September 2018, your girl was struggling, looking for a way. The IG thing, that's cute, that's fine. But how do we monetize? The money gotta come in. Your girl single mom, <laughs> doing it on my own. So. Uh, an offer for OnlyFans came to me in 2018. So I tried that out, saw the money coming in, and I was in there before the uh, wave. So, period. And that's how it's about. All right. So you 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 go viral for a, a picture because you're fine. Let me just listen to stay with it. You're fine. You you go viral for a picture. They you get a lot of attention on Instagram. Let, let me ask you this. Is this like a lot? What When you're going viral for that type of stuff, is it a lot of negative attention, positive attention, hating? What was, what was kind of like that attention that you were getting from the general public from that? Um, okay, so it was a shift. Um, it started off with just uh, me going, uh, taking pictures on second, telling people come to the ball, come get a drink. And from there, once I got the OnlyFans, I will say, you know, I never knew how to dance. As a teenager, I would come to MC shaking little uh, parties in the class. <laughs> Period. I never knew how to shake. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> so, you know, um, my clapping videos are like crazy because I really like made that a thing. Okay. And I started doing a little clapping and I saw the money coming in from that. So, it shifted, but over time, as you know, I started making more money. I was able to clean up my image more and more because you got to transition. Definitely. Definitely. So I just kept transitioning with time. So now we to the point where you know I can put up my cute pictures, travel, and you know I can clean up my image. I still have my things on OnlyFans that I do, but of course you got to be eighteen. You got to subscribe. You got to put your information and your card info in. It's a long process, so if you're gonna Perfect. see me on OnlyFans, then that was your choice, not mine. <laughs> what did you? So, when, of course, going viral, especially for this type of, of content, what was your family saying? What was the the, the people around you like? Cousin, mama? <laughs> I, they couldn't believe it. They were like, not Regan. Like it was a hard thing because me and my mom, we never really had a really good relationship. So her seeing this and coming from a Christian background, and even the people that are, were around me, they were like, "This is the quiet girl. Like, what the hell is going on?" So it was like initially a big shock for people, and it wasn't really accepted um, by my people, people, because they were like, "This is not her." But it actually was me. But, you know, they just didn't know that. So um, it was so crazy. I had a conversation with Sweet Wine, and Sweet Wine was like, Regan, you're going to get so big to the point you can't work on second no more because you're going to be big. He was like, and let me tell you something. You know, you got to use your assets sometimes to get your money. Definitely. And, you know, at the time, I was working three jobs. I was working at the pharmacy. My day was like this. <laughs> I would wake up at 6 a.m., I would get my son together. I would have him at morning care by 7.45. I'm at the pharmacy opening up by 8.45 from, okay, so this is Laplace. I'm waking up at 6 a.m. I'm getting my son to school in Kenner for 7.45. I'm getting to the West Bank for 8.45, 9-ish. 
Girl, what you okay. driving? <laughs> what you driving? Yes. A spaceship? <laughs> I worked in a pharmacy because I was the pharmacy tech lead. So I'm working there from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. I'm asking my, my boss, please let me start getting off at about 4.30 because I got to get my son from aftercare by 6. Got to get to aftercare by 6. Got to get my son from aftercare to my grandmother's house so that my mom could go pick my son up from my grandmother's house so that I can get dressed and go down to the ball. I was wow. actually working on second uh, from 6.45 p.m. till about 10.45 p.m. Monday through Thursdays. And then I would leave from second at 10.45 and I would go work showcase, Ooh. which is a strip club out there. And I would work showcase from 11 till about 4 a.m. I would basically take a nap because I'm leaving from showcase to the place. Take a nap, get up and do it all over again. Girl, there is a lot. Okay. Hey, you, look, money don't sleep, and I guess neither did read it at the time. All right. So you, you mentioned, of course, you have a son and being a mom. Right. Is this your, your, your son? Is How old is he? He's now 15. Okay. And this is your only child? My only child. Okay. So uh, some time ago, so. So he was maybe about when this was happening about what seven or eight. Um, at that okay. time he was about I want to say he was ten turning eleven. Okay. Gotcha. Um. So can we talk then about your son and who his father is? Get into mm -hmm. that real quick. Who is your son's father? Um, his father is uh Ray, also known as Razor. Razor. Okay. And were you in a relationship with him when you when your son was conceived or was it just what what was your uh status when when you when you had your son? Okay, so I had come from Kenna to Laplace because my mom bought a house in Laplace. So I was going to high school at East St. John. So by the time I got there, I was in eleventh grade. Um and that's when I met him in eleventh grade. And we were just kind of talking. Katrina hit. We were still talking. And then uh, we started, you know, messing around. So uh, by 2006, we were, so 2005, 2006, we were talking. We went to prom together and decided to be boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay. Uh, 2006. And then uh, I decided, I was like, I'm, my mama had a conversation with me. She was like, Regan. You about to go to college. I got accepted into college. Uh, she just paid for my dorm and everything. So she was like, you don't need no boyfriend. She was like, you know, this is your time to have fun and enjoy that experience of college. So I told him, I was like, oh, can't have a boyfriend. We done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just like that. <laughs> like that. And then like two days later, my, uh, my friends, we was all, we had a little, it was all girls. So we would track each other, period. So we sit at the table and it's like a period check in. So we like, you had yours, you had yours. So I'm like, okay, mine coming. So then, like, three weeks pass and I'm like, everybody rolling around again. And I'm like, uh oh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> so then they was like, go pee on the sticks, see what's going on. I do, I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh my God. So, oh, wow. And I was two months pregnant. Oh, wow. So I was like, oh my God. So I called him, I reached out, and I'm like, look. I'm pregnant. He hung up on me. Didn't talk to me for like three days. So <laughs> I had to I had to tell my family. So I told my mom, I told my daddy. And my dad was like, Well, what the boy feel like? I was like, he's not talking to me. So um I told my mom, she was like, We gotta go to the family, we gotta go see what's going on. <laughs> so we ran over there and he told his mom and dad that we only had sex one time. So I couldn't possibly be pregnant for him. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, so he finally was like, we need to have a conversation, just me and him. And he was like, you need to terminate. And I was like, I'm not doing it. And I said then, I was like, if it's going to be me and my son, I'm not my son, but if it's going to be me and my baby, it'll just be me and my baby. Like, and that's just what it is. Because honestly, my mind, they already made my mind up for me. I'm 17. I, I don't have control over my body anyways. Right. So... 
it was just that. So I I went through my pregnancy with me and my mom. Shout and out to shout out to your mom and your dad. Uh, yeah. And and doing the right thing and 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 uh, go ahead. See, were you okay? So you seem a lot nosh a lot about y'all dealings. Like, were you not angry? Were you not? I'm gonna throw the pot at you, cook some grits, throw them. What? So how was you so just okay? Whatever. How how did how were you like that? How, it, it was hard for me, honestly. I felt like I was in denial, but I was so sad because I was like, my mom was saying like you gotta hide this from the family because I was like the angel of the family <laughs> so she was like we can't tell them right now she had to go get her money back from the school I got accepted into um my mama made some quick plays for me she got me enrolled at Tulane University so while I was pregnant I was taking night classes because I would be sick throughout the day okay. and you know I just had a conversation with her and then one of my aunts she passed away God rest her soul but she was like Riga you ain't the first you ain't gonna be the last she was like yeah. you just you know we got a rule, you know. Definitely. Okay. So, so during your pregnancy, was he involved at all? What What was What was he like during your pregnancy? It was like, uh, uh, okay, I'm here. Then no, I'm not. Kind of thing because he was still in high school. I graduated a year before him. I'm three months older than him, but he was a grade behind me. Um. So it was like a maybe maybe not kind of thing for him which again i wasn't tripping but then they had it was crazy it was like one girl came to me told me she was pregnant for him too and i'm like oh my god like you know and then my mama was like regan you are you a woman now so she said let's have this woman a woman she was like you know i'm going to file for child support right now she was like because one thing that we don't need is you running after him to need financial assistance. Okay. So when that was filed, his mom said, well, my son is not getting a job. He's in high school. So she was like, any kind of bills that he going to have, that's on me. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I had my baby. He asked for a test. I told him no problem. Um, and actually... He didn't even sleep with me at the hospital the day after I had my son. His mom was under the impression that he did, but he actually went to sleep by some girl house in which that came to my knowledge because the girl reached out to me when my baby was maybe three weeks old and was like, uh, I guess they had an argument. So she came to me, woman, that woman to woman shit, and was like, you know, uh, he slept at my house. He said that's not his baby. And all this and that. So I was just like, I was evil about it. But um, once he he actually picked me up from the hospital. No, yeah, he picked me up from the hospital. He was like, my mama said we got to get a DNA. So I said, it's fine. Let's get a DNA. Because I'm for sure, like, this is the only guy I'm with. So right. then my baby whole face turns to his the next week. And he was like, I don't need it. So I'm like, no, you asked for it. I was embarrassed by you asking. Let's get it. Right. I'm still waiting for that to this day. I wish I could, but, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, a uh, duh, you know, is my son is for him. It's a no-brainer. So, uh, you know, I had my son two weeks after I had my son. Like, I called him and I'm like, I need wipes, and he was like, I'm on tour with my partners. Like, use a wet towel or something, and I'm like, what? <laughs> so, you know, it's just not been an easy road since. From the beginning, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so at some point you realize that you probably own this, this kind of like on your own. Okay. And what part did you say? You know what? I ain't even. I'm, I don't have no time. I'm gonna just make this happen. And what part did you say that to yourself? <laughs> It was a long road because, like I said, it was a lot of young ladies he was dealing with. You know, we were children. So it was a lot of girls that were angry at the fact that I had my son. It's a lot of girls. So it was a lot of fussing, fighting, and all this. I had a girl slash my tires and all of this. So it was a crazy road, but it. I finally, I think by the time my son was maybe one, I was like, this too much like you know because it was a lot and he wasn't 
helping. And like my son, by the time he was four weeks old, I was applying for a job. I, I was like, you know, I dropped out of Tulane and I'm like, I just got to make some money. I went in and rolled at Delgado. I was just going up for the check <laughs> so, I, so I could get some money rolling something because even though I had him on child support at the time, he was still in high school. Exactly. There ain't no money coming in. <laughs> so you had him on child support for uh, the longest. He's always been on child support. He's always been on child support, yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right. So moving on, you doing what you could do. Right. You in school work single parent he's not there no income coming in it was the ever point that y'all became amicable that y'all had an understanding was the ever point that y'all got to he just realized this is my child i want to be involved i want to be supported financially when when did when did that occur and well, if, if, my son had his face it was no denying it so <laughs> <laughs> you know it was like okay this is my child so i want to say like um, he went to jail okay. um, when my son was small. And when he went to jail, like, he was reaching out. And I was under the impression that, okay, maybe he's going to do right because he, the jail told, I'm going to do right, this, that, and that. So I thought it was going to be okay. And that mm -hmm. lasted all of maybe a week. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> It was a week. He came home, and then a week later, he was nowhere. Right. Back. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, but he was still. It was. He still was on child support during this time. He was. Wasn't. 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 But wasn't financially assisting otherwise. Right. And he really couldn't be. So it was like, even though he wasn't doing for my child, like um, the arrears had built up so much to the point. He was looking for a job, but he uh, couldn't get his license renewed because of the arrears. So I called the case. He reached out to me. He told me that I called the case where I asked for what he could do. Um, I relayed that message to him to tell him what the caseworker said he should do. And um, I I mean, we, we tried to see what was going on. A few dollars was coming in once he started getting jobs and once that was taken care of. So I can say that, you know, at least some change was coming in, you know. Gotcha. All right. And that's that's what about him spending time and, and, and being there? Oh my God. That that it was so crazy because I was talking to a friend last night and it made me like I was like, I don't wanna lie on this boy and make him look like a monster at all. So I'm going on my Facebook and I'm looking at my messages and I mean I got messages from oh seven, oh okay. nine. Like right. all and every time he got a, a girlfriend, he will forget that he has a child. Like, this has been going on for a long time. Every time he get a girlfriend, he forget he has a son. He has, he has a son. But when he does not have a girlfriend, he remembers he has a son. What does your son think about him? Uh, I never forget. Okay, so first of all, I forgot to say, okay, so uh, I want to say 2011, my son was three. Um... It was understood that he would pick up my son every weekend, every other weekend. And one uh, night, he calls and he says, hey, uh, he need diapers. So I was like, you need to buy diapers for your own house. Like, you know, I'm nickel and diamond. Like, I can't hold up for diapers. So I ain't got none to spell. So he was like, well, if you ain't giving me no diapers, then you need to come get them. So I'm like, okay, meet me in the parking lot in Walmart in La Place. So he was like, all right. So he pulls up in a parking lot, and I tell my friend Jessica, I look over to her, and I say, girl, they got a crowbar down there. If he act up, bitch, come out swinging like I'm playing. So she was like, they'll go to the truck. So I see him, and I'm laughing. And as I'm getting out the car, I didn't pay attention. He's swinging at me full force. And he hits the top of the car, and he missed me, and we just start fighting. <laughs> and she did just like what we talked about. She got out the car swinging. And by the time she getting out the car, he got three other friends coming out the car. And they all jumped on us. And they're jumping on us. And I'm fighting. And it's to the point this boy got his fingers digging in my eye. And he's trying to gouge my eye out. And 
uh, one of his, his brother, I want to say, was like, dog, she just wants a baby. So he goes and gets my son out the car and throws my baby in the car. And this pisses me off even more so. So I'm like trying to get at him. But by this time, they all didn't got in the car and they left. So oh I'm like, why did no one help us? Like it's a whole, you know, right. audience. So they was like, y'all will be back together tomorrow type shit. So I'm like, what the hell? So you know, I told I called the police, I pressed charges and everything like that. So the police told me I had to do a um restraining order for me and for my son because I couldn't keep my son away from him. Right. So I went to the court, I filed or the justice of the peace I filed, and me and my son had a restraining order on him for a long time. And um we went to court about it. And the judge was like, do you understand this young lady almost went blind? Because I had to go to the eye doctor and they said I had damage in this eye, which it's not bad anymore. But right. um, the judge was like, you know, I'm honoring this restraining order. Like, this is crazy. So once we had to go back to court, by then he got into some more legal trouble. So I didn't want him to get into any more legal trouble. So I didn't show up for court. But make sure he was strict. Um, shout out to Jessica. Jessica understood the assignment, but I don't think there's no place a man should be touching a woman in a violent manner. I just don't think that. Um, I don't. I really. Think, I believe that there's so many other ways. And as far as gentlemen, y'all, we have to start learning to uh, take care of our anger in a different way when it comes to stuff like that. No matter how many years, this is a lady, regardless of the fact. And I hate. I'm sorry that it happened to you. Uh, uh, the legal ramifications from it when when you say so by you not going to court the charges was eventually dropped on him. Right. On I, that I, they picked up some charges for his uh brothers or something, his brother or something like that, but yeah, I didn't pursue anymore. Okay. Um so just fast forward a bit and we're gonna excuse, we're gonna get away from that part. Talk about the elephant in the room real quick. Uh going to that. So you had issues with him Oh, for basically the entire duration of your pregnancy, what uh, and then all into your the your child's life. When it comes to y'all, were y'all ever again romantically involved? Do y'all have any type of not involved in like like um as far as you saying like as far as how my son felt about it when my son was four, I never forget. I told my son, I'm like, uh, your dad is coming to pick you up, and at four, my son told me, no, he not. He don't never. And that was at four. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, and and that's definitely 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 heartfelt. <laughs> what? So, of course, he went on to have other relationships. He ended up getting married. Uh, and that was the best thing that could ever happen. Really? Talk that about that. Was the best thing because um, my son had went to private school. I got him into private. School. Who, um, for kindergarten and um, I never forget I pulled up to his house to talk to him about my son needing some things for school in which his then girlfriend at the time she tried to follow us out when I told him I needed to speak with him and I told her I said you know this not for you you know you're his girlfriend me and him need to have this conversation which she didn't take it badly she was like you know okay I understand and by the time they got married you know, she reached out to me and she was like, Regan, I know you and him don't have the best relationship, but we're married. I'm going to be around your son. I want to know how to, you know, be a great stepmom to him. And at some point, I would love for you and him to figure out how to co-parent successfully. And which uh, I told her, like, you know, the version of him that I received, I don't feel comfortable with just he and I talking, you know. Um, but okay. maybe in the future, you know, but she was, she was the one who would tell him like, you know, the right things. And she would even reach out and be like, you know, Hey, would you mind if I came and picked up, picked up your son, you know, because he's at work or something like that. So she was the best thing that could have ever happened. That's, that sounds good. That's a shout out to her for being a, a stepping up and being a woman and handling it in a womanly way. Uh, why? So let me ask you this: What were you doing when it comes to? Were you in a relationship during the time when he was? Did you ever kind of? Um, I was in a six-year relationship. 
relationship. Um, so prior to him getting married, I was in a relationship. Um, until uh, I was in that relationship until I think like 2015. Okay. How did he feel about your relationship? Was there any type of conflict there when it comes to how? Actually, um, I pushed for them to meet. My then boyfriend even came with me to his family's function to go meet up with him, in which he was not open to it initially. Um, and he was with his now ex-wife at the time, but he wasn't real open to it. And then uh, he started seeing my ex-boyfriend's involvement with him. And he even dapped them off and was like, thank you for being everything that I know I'm not. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Sounds like growth when it comes to this 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 moment. Um to, to his 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 ex wife now. Um so that began an amicable kind of sort of relationship with, with your side of the world and his side of the world when it came to your son. Was the relationship with your son better at that time? Did it start to get better? Was it starting to grow as well? It it was a little better as far as the consistency but his ex-wife played a, a lot in that but then it came a time once when um he then he called me again he was like hey can you send uh i'm coming over there to come pick up some more shoes for for him for this weekend and i was like that's the the rule i live by look make your home just as comfortable over there as it is over here it should be to the point to where when you're picking him up i shouldn't even have to pack a bag so I was like, you know, it sounded like a shopping spree, my uh, daddy and son to me. And he was like, well, I'm dropping them off. And I was like, you serious? So um, it was at night. I'm sitting in the kitchen and I hear a car like speed up and stop. And it sounded like it was close to my driveway because my driveway was kind of far from the door. I open the door and my son is crying. And I'm walking up to my son. I'm like, what's going on? He was like, my daddy put me out the car. And I'm like, what you talking about? He said, my daddy told me to get the F out the car. Oh, wow. And so I, I was so mad. I couldn't find something to pick up and throw at the car. All I could find was an empty <laughs> uh, one liter cold drink bottle. And I, was <laughs> that. I was just so angry. But I called him and I was like, why would you do that? And he was like, you know, kind of like, belligerent cursing me out whatever whatever and i told him i said the next time you see my son this is the only time i ever did this i said the next time you see my son it will be court ordered unless you could give me something from the court saying i have to give my son to you i'm not doing it and which his wife filed for the visitation motion so i took off from work one day i go down to the court for the court date i'm sitting there he he's a no-show i call him and I'm like, well, yeah, I'm at court. There's something you called for. And he was like, oh, shit, I forgot. And we left that alone. So he had to go file again, which he filed the second time. And when he filed the second time, everything was pretty cordial between him and I sitting in the courtroom. And he was like, remember that time when we had got into it at Walmart? He was like, he got on the stand and he said that I sat in front of his house. And which that was a lie. And he told me in court that day, he was like, come to find out that was my ex-girlfriend coming to check on me because she had heard what, what happened at Walmart. So I wanted to apologize for that. So that happened that time. And, um, you know, everything seemed to be okay until his then wife got pregnant. Once she got pregnant with her own child, the tempo between she and I changed a bit. Okay. How so? <laughs> um, okay, so it was an incident that occurred to where um, something happened with their baby uh, falling off the sofa or something, and they told me that my son was weird and mean because they watched on the baby camera and watched my son watch the baby fall. And I said, do you not understand that my son is the only child? I'm an only child. My son is a king at my house and at my mama's house. He doesn't know how to handle a child. 
if anything, y'all are weird for watching it happen instead of trying to prevent it. So once that was said, it was over with between she and I because what you're not going to do is you're not going to talk about my child. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that was it after that. So after that, actually, I noticed that when he would come, his dad would come pick him up from me, it was more of my son going to his grandmother's house than going to their house. They would actually come visit my son at the grandmother's house as opposed to them picking up my son and having him there in which I asked like what's going on like what's up with this and they never answered any they never said oh his dad said well he said he want to be by his grandmother's house but that but the whole point of it is for him to establish a relationship with you though so like what's going on with that you know what I'm saying that was weird to me let's get back to you real quick you <laughs> You, yeah, because I'm just unimpressed at all with his fatherhood skills when it comes to your child, and I don't think that's fair. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that agree with me on that one, just kind of knowing this side of the story. Uh, I want to talk, so you become a social media icon, millions of followers, millions of dollars, but, but for, you know, girl, you make your choice change. I need to make a loan, by the way, in case you uh, want to feel generous, but uh, no shame. You go, you get, you get all this stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of successes. You actually leave the area go to new or uh, go to atlanta right actually mm -hmm. um so before anything with uh him what had you ever had any interactions with another person who's successful out of our city super saint had you ever had any um, interactions with her or any type of dealings with her before no. i don't know her i've never met her i've only ever seen her on social media i've actually reposted a few of her videos i thought she was funny i loved her story but that's as far as it went like till this day i've never been in her presence i've never met her formally or informally ever okay um all right and and so you had no issue with her whatsoever she had no issue with you whatsoever y'all never been in each other company y'all never been uh, in each other's surroundings, y'all have any friends in common? Anything like that? Nothing. Just... Um, I mean, we have a few people that I that I know that once I, my career started taking off, they would say like, "Dang, it's so good to see people from our city like her, like you, actually, you know, making money from the internet." Like, I have a few mutual acquaintances that you know no, I... was, but I have not ever. No, uh, she actually came and followed me in 2019. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. One of our mutual friends must have mentioned it or something. So I actually followed her back. Um, and then it wasn't too long after that. That's when the story broke that she and my son's father had started publicly dating, I think. And that's when I was like, okay, so what was the motive behind this so <laughs> that got kind of weird for me so i unfollowed because i'm like wait a minute i don't like i'm big on intention so i don't know what the intent was i don't know if it was that or what it was but i was like let me just unfollow because that's kind of touchy <laughs> all right I, um, I remember breaking that story uh about a year ago that there's another gossip site actually was saying that uh she had somebody else who was messing with Walmart or something. I was like, nope, this is what she messed with. I posted a picture of them in Walmart that had been had in a in a in a cut. They, and they, that's <laughs> what really caught my attention too, because um when you broke the story and I saw that his ex-wife brother had said, Wait till the world finds out who the first baby mother is. And when he said that, I reached out to him and I was like, What wow. was that about? Right. Because this is a man who's cut my son's hair before. Like, so I'm like, what's really going on? I really didn't even know that was his sister. So I was <laughs> like, what's up with that? So he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Regan. And I was like, it's just so crazy that that disrespect is so big. Yet this apology was so little, you know. Very much so. Very much so. I do remember him coming under that post and saying that. And I do like remember. I I, I, I don't remember. I need to check that. 
I don't know if I slid in your DMs or whatever. I, you know, I was at the time I was really, really messy, really, really nosy. I'm a little, I'm a little less nosy, a little less messy now. But um, I might have slid in your DMs at the time, like girl, was we'll see. But okay, but you, but you kept it. You always have kept it kosher. You have always had handled this in a professional manner, manner, which is why I don't know because, of course, recently there was a, a this went viral a burn page or as we call it a. a a fufu page or a burner account was posting about him having a baby on the way now, as if to say since they have been dating. Uh, as and you were a, a, accused <laughs> by her as probably being one of the culprits. You or her her baby dad. Either. And that was weird because actually, um, I didn't know anything about it. My traffic to my page is beyond crazy. So I don't know who follows, who doesn't follow someone. So my cousin brought it to my attention and was like, Regan, like, what's up? Then I had another cousin. She was like, Regan, what's up? So I'm like, I don't know. So I go look at the page myself and the page had been following me and my family members. So I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So, you know, I actually went and blocked the page because I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you want to, I don't want no parts of it. I understand. Yeah. Um, so so you don't know. You don't know who paid. I don't know anything about. It. And you know what really bothered me is this. I feel like um, okay. So a lot of people were seeing what I saw about in February. My son's birthday is February second, and. Nice. Um, actually, an incident occurred between my son and my and his, uh, father family, as well as his father. Um, this happened last April. Um, I was going on a trip to Miami, me and my family, and I asked my son, I said, you know, you ready? You excited? He was like, I actually want to go spend time with my other family. And I said, that's no problem. I asked his dad. He said it was okay for him to come. I, I dropped him off there. I go to Miami. I showed him videos. My son, I'm FaceTiming him while we were on a yacht because he's been with me before. So he loved the yacht. And I showed him the dolphins. We go to the aquarium. And um, so my son got off the phone. He had told them, from my son told me, he told them, like, I passed up on a yacht and dolphins to come chill with y'all. Y'all know I love y'all, but they took it as an insult. So um, that went kind of sour, but my son wanted to stay so badly um, that I guess he kind of let it rise. So it's time for me to come back from Miami. I'm like, Jaden, am I coming to Miami and pick you? I mean, coming to New Orleans to pick you up? Or am I going to Atlanta? So he was like, Mama, can I stay? So I said, well, ask your grandmother. She said, yes. So in between the time of me going from Miami to Atlanta, I guess the stuff had to hit the fan. The grandmother, no, his dad is texting me saying, uh, he's out state is welcome. His grandmother wants him gone. And I'm like, hmm? So <laughs> I called the grandmother and the grandmother was like, uh, your son is disrespectful. I want him like gone, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, what in the world's going on? But I'm not trying to figure it out. I just want my son out that environment. Right. So I called my mom. She stays not too far from them. I'm like, my go pick up my son. I don't know what's going on. Right. So my mom said, I told Jaden they wasn't going to, you know, be happy for too long. You know, them people not used to him. So I'm like, right. So she went and picked him up. I called him. I'm like, your grandma outside. And it's quiet in the background. So I'm like, Jaden, why is it quiet? Like, where are the people? He was like, they watching me leave out the house. I said, no kisses, goodbye, no nothing. He was like, they just watching me leave out the door. So I'm like, okay. So call my mama to ask my mama because I'm in disbelief. I can't believe that. I can't believe people there and they're not saying nothing. So, <laughs> so my mama like, oh, they walking up to the call now. All I hear the grandmother say is, because he a disrespectful little boy. And ever since he went to Atlanta and he got money, he thinks he better than us. And the grandfather saying, uh, you a fucked up individual. You a fucked up person to my son. So I'm like, mom, drop off. <laughs> right. Like, so she drove off. I called the grandmother and I'm like, look. I was like, what is going on? Like, what trigger this? 
So uh, she like, I'm not fussing with you. And I'm like, ma'am, I'm not fussing with you. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. So she gives the phone to Ray and she like, talk to your baby mama. So he get on the phone and I'm like, what is going on? And he was like, I don't know. I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find out. So I called to check back on my son. Keep in mind, I'm in Atlanta. All this going on. So right. um, my mom was like, "Rick, and I never saw him upset like this. He crying, he crying, he upset. Like I never seen him like this before. I don't want him to go back by the people." So I'm like, I really don't either. But trying my hardest to give, just like understand because I am confused. Right. So um, I called his dad back, and his dad was like. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know what happened. He's telling me, but I don't know. So I'm like, well, look, don't let the night go by without going to check on your son. I said, go get your dad. You and him go by my mama's house. Go sit down and resolve it. Show him how men can resolve issues and still love each other. Because my dad is deceased. My grandfather stepped in his place. He is deceased. So y'all are only two men that he has to look up to. I wait this boy let the whole night go by. Never checked on him. So the next day, I called my mama because, like, my mama's my, that's my partner in crime. That's my partner when it comes to raising my son. My mama was like, Regan, I think it's just best that we take a break from this because the way that my grandson cried last night, I never saw him cry like that. The damn, I like it hurt me. She was like, we just need to give him a break from these people because he got to heal from this. And I'm like, I totally agree. So I text his dad and I said, look, you let the night go by, you know, so now I have to do what's best for my son. I said, so we all just going to distance ourselves from y'all for a while. So I actually put my son in counseling. I did counseling with him because I wanted my son to heal because over the time that has passed, my son has always said he feels like there's a favoritism towards the other two children and it makes him feel uncomfortable with being over there. And I'm not forcing my son to go over there. And, you know, he's always like, I could just see it was taking a toll on him. And, you know, I'm like, no, we got to take a break from that. So I want to say that happened in April. So by November, after we had done a lot of counseling, I said, Jaden, look, after this counseling session, the counselor said, I have to let the ball go in his court and let him make the choice of repairing a relationship. And so what I did was I told him, we're going to all collectively unblock him. And if he reaches out, you handle it how you see fits best. And which from November until February, he's not blocked, but he's not reaching out. So um, that's when... February 2nd came, which is my son's birthday, as well as his now fiance's birthday is as well. So I'm like, I'm, I'm knowing, I was like, I know this boy not going to let this day go by because it's bad enough he has not bought my son a Christmas gift since 2018. So I'm like, I'm knowing he's not going to let this birthday go by. Like, you know, so I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And I finally was like, fuck this. So I said, I reached out to him and I said, you want to acknowledge your son? And so he was like, I sent him a message at midnight and, you know, he didn't respond back. And I've been reaching out and he ain't been responding back. So I'm like, well, on our end, we not seeing it. So he sent a screenshot of him trying to reach out, like, maybe twice every other month between November until February. But we didn't see that. I even showed him a screenshot showing he's not blocked. So I said, well, look, this is what I'm going to do. I said, I'm about to call him. And he can speak to him. So I called him on my phone. And I let him tell him happy birthday. We got off the... Keep in mind, he didn't buy him anything or nothing. He has bought him a birthday gift or a Christmas gift since 2018. And I say 2018 because that's when I know I started making money. And maybe the thing that I was doing for my son maybe intimidated him to what he felt like. What he did maybe wouldn't matter. But anything he would have did matter because he loved his daddy. Right. But anyways, you know... He tell him happy birthday. That was that. Next thing I know, you know, I see viral castles and this and that and that. I'm like. <laughs> he went out for her birthday. Huh? He went out for her birthday. He, he went out. Yeah, for like, you know what I'm saying? So um, after that, I text him. And I'm like, look, dude, like, you got to do something. Because at this point, your son is 
14, 15, he made 15. I said, you know, he's able to get online and see what you're doing for this person. Like, you got to let him know that he means more to you than anything. You know what I'm saying? Make him feel special. And I said, what I'll do is I'm going to create a group chat for all three of us so that we can repair this because like this is really bad you know he is 15 and he's seeing these things he's seeing you interacting with your two boys because that's all you see on his page is his two boys you're not seeing him you're not seeing my son you know on there so i'm like dude you got we gotta we gotta repair so i did group chat he was not really My phone? Okay, good. I can't hear you. Okay. I can, can y'all hear? I can't hear her. Okay. I can hear you now, yeah. Girls get good yep. off. See, who calling you, girl? Tell me to talk to you tomorrow. Girl, I'm talking about. Girl, we're getting it. Um, you can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. You can hear me? Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, I created the group chat. And, again, it was really no no nothing. And, you know, I even offered. I said, hey, he said, can he see him? He said he was actually going to be coming to Atlanta, which that was Judy's wedding. So, he said he was actually coming into Atlanta and he wanted to see him. I said, well, you know, due to the last incident that occurred, I don't feel comfortable with just sending him. I said, so me and you need to have a conversation first before that happens. Um, he agreed. The conversation didn't ever really happen. Um, and he came to Atlanta and he went. And I didn't say anything. I still tried to keep everything kosher. I was still go in the chat and be like, hey, y'all, good morning. Like, what's going on? So then I finally went to the side, and I was like, look, dude, what's going on? I talked to you. I, you know, we 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 said we agreed we were going to fix this. Like, what's up? He was like, oh, I've been busy with work. But I'm knowing better. I can go online. I see you that been to Atlanta five times now. And not one time did you call and say, hey, can I see my son? Because keep in mind, the last incident that I told you occurred was in April of 20. 21 till this day he has not physically seen his son since april 2021 wow so you know it's just like what's going on and it's been a steady decline as i've seen his presence on social media incline in which i'm knowing that my son he doesn't have an instagram but you know like i'm knowing He's seen something, you know what I'm saying? And now it's to the point where people are even calling, like, you saw your dad on there, you saw your dad on there, like, and, you know, uh, and I had a conversation with him. I asked him how he feel, and he was like, mama, he said, I'm to the point where, you know, I don't hate my daddy. He was like, I still love my daddy, he said, but I'm just at peace with, this is just what it is, and I'm at peace with that. And I don't hate my dad. He was like, I still love my dad. You taught me to still love him and still respect him. And he said, I do. He was like, but I just forgive him. And I just want to move on in life. But he's 15. Right. What does that do to your spirit, though? How does it? How do you feel when your son is at peace with not having his father in his life? What, how do you, what does that do to you? It hurts. It hurts. And that's why I tried. <laughs> and I tried because I know that as young men, they have, y'all have to gain a thicker skin. You know, y'all, y'all, it's not okay for y'all to show emotion. Y'all have to show strength. Y'all have to show this and that. And I, I want him to know that it's okay to be angry and you don't have to hate him. But I told him, if you feel like there's something you need to talk to him about, still call him if it touches you to call him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to hate him. I'm not raising you to hate him. Still have a respect for him. But don't leave this unsettled within you. And, you know, he still shows that strength. 
but it hurts me because as a mother, you just know. And you know better. And, you know, just seeing him and how he showcases his relationship with the other two boys. And I even noticed the picture and his reasons at the top of his page. And his reasons are all the other two boys, not one, is of my son. And at which one of the pictures, he actually cropped my son out of the picture. So it's just like, let me say this. First of all, I, I have a. Th this is a lot. A lot of this is my first time here, um, and I have a, a thousand and ten more percent respect for you and the single mothers out there that's making it happen outside of nothing. It is just hearing this to me sounds like the hardest thing in the world to do because you are wearing so many hats. You're wearing mother. You're wearing father. You're wearing counselor. You're wearing teacher you're a provider you're doing too it's like so much and i don't know how i don't know i know i couldn't do it i got i just i could i'd have been saying look child i'm about to come over there with a bat and knock you upside the head with it i'm not gonna repair nothing you're gonna be repairing that mug so i definitely have a lot of respect for you and handling it the way you handle it so when the the, the when 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 superstar put in the airspace that without knowing you that it could have been you that was trying to do something to her or her relationship uh with with tr with a trolling thing and to hear this is what you're actually going through how did that make you how how did you feel how did you that make you when that was confronted to you i'm sure people were sending you the recording and everything else it's this is this is this is baby mama and trying to paint this narrative of you being a bit of baby mama to, to a point that you would go troll her uh what what was that in, in knowing what you're doing what would you say to those people that were seconding that and agreeing with that and looking at that i mean she in here watching now we know that um uh he probably here too probably sitting next to the other watching me on the big screen how y'all doing uh but how do y'all how do y'all how do you feel about having that narrative painted of a bit of baby mama that is unjustified in anything but having the justification to do whatever they, they're blaming you for some trolling or some foolishness like that it's like i feel like for one i and i feel very insulted by that because <laughs> i'm dealing with real life i'm dealing with real life like i'm dealing with raising my son and making sure that He's okay at every aspect. My son is in high school now. I didn't realize that it affected him until I go to a teacher conference and he has a black uh, man for a teacher. And the teacher pulled me to the side and he said, I want to ask you a question about your son. And I said, yeah. He said, does he have a father in the home? And I said, no. He said, is his father active in his life? And I said, no. And he said, no disrespect, but I can tell. And I said, how? And he said, because anything I ask of him to do, he he does it um, kind of like he does it with an attitude or he is some kind of anger that builds up. And he said, I noticed that in most male students that don't have a father in the home because they're not used to getting any kind of instruction from a man. And I was like, wow. So from then on, he said, I'm going to now handle him knowing that in a different way. And he handled him and came in as more of a male role model figure for him. And which I thank God that he even took the time to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I am very in tune with my son. I am a mother. Like, even to take this time now, I'm sitting in my basement because I want to make sure my son doesn't hear this conversation. He may, if this is around, I don't know, I'm not sure. But I also had a conversation with him about this prior to me doing it, just to make sure that he would know and just to make sure I don't go too far outside of any kind of boundaries he wouldn't be comfortable with. I'm a mother. I don't have time for that. <laughs> no, I, 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 don't sound like. and, and it sounds petty to me 
because understand that while you have now, from my understanding, he lives there now. He's waking up to your children every day now. My son never experienced that. You know what I'm saying? He's seen the other two boys be celebrated more, even outside of the marriage. Like when his dad said he was getting a divorce, my son said, ooh, now I could get my daddy back because he'll have more time for me. But it didn't happen like that. So, you know, I am catering to my son's needs and I am making sure my business is still going. I'm making sure I'm still working on other things. I just got offered uh, a movie rule. My son said that he's interested in movies. I'm now looking for uh, acting classes for my son and myself so that we can both do this. Um, I'm even, and I didn't say it to him, he probably watched it. I was going to ask him, hey, do you have any kind of jobs for my son on set so that he could get involved in this? Like, you know, anything that I do, I have to take my son. My son is with me. So it's like, I'm in real life in real time. I'm not trying to create any type of narrative online to generate sales due to any kind of chaos from my real life. This is my real life. This right here that I'm uncovering that I don't show. This is my real life, what I deal with when I log off. If people really, my followers know, and the people that know me in an uh, everyday aspect, I wake up. When my son is in school, I wake up at 6 to wake him up for 6.30. I get him to school in between the time he goes to school and the time he gets off that bus. That's my time right there to film everything I need to film, post everything I need to post because by the time he off the bus, we're going to get yogurt, we're going to the park, we're talking about our days, I'm getting dinner together, homework because I'm in school as well. So me and him working on homework and then we bath and sleep. That's our everyday. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I, I, I certainly believe you. I think she was grasping at straws. So, so I, I don't think you had anything to do with that. I, I just I just don't get that feeling. I don't know where the whole big, bit of baby mama narrative is, is, is coming from in her mind. Probably him, obviously. Success does, you know, threaten some people, especially if they have that inferiority complex, which it sounds like he has. Um, not diagnosed anymore. I don't know him. But I will say this. Uh, let, so let me let's just let me switch gears a bit. And you mentioned that you know the movie's coming up. What is it? What can we? Ex so for us that are fans of you, um, I know that's probably a lot, of, a lot more gentlemen, but some of the ladies love it too. What can we? What are we expecting from you when it comes to that business? And 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 what is what is coming up for you as transitioning from mom entrepreneur to mogul and put it all together? Ah, it's not the circle. Okay, there you go. You get me? <laughs> what? what right. You get? Did you hear my last? You heard my last question? What is she doing? What's going on? You can hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. You went to a dead spot or something, girl? You gotta get on Wi-Fi, girl. Be on house, okay? Big house. <laughs> okay, I know I'm coming. When I come to Atlanta, I know who I'm staying with now. Where my room at? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Okay, we should go over there. <laughs> but, um, so as you as you got, what what can we expect from you when it comes to um, some of the things that you have going on? When you say yeah, the movies going on, so we're looking for you the movies. What else we got going on? What kind of other business ventures and stuff that we can look forward to that you have coming for yourself? Like you have. Um, you... I'm sorry, I was looking for something. Um, like I said, uh, venturing into movies. Um. As you can tell by my page, I'm starting to clean it up more because I'm on my way out the game. <laughs> like, I feel like I closed on my house. I got my home. So now I'm working towards different avenues and and just venturing into other things, um, possibly reality TV, um, product lines. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of things that I'm piecing together for myself because, like I said, my IG model days. <laughs> but, you still, but, you, but you still got it. You still be getting, you still be clocking your stuff now. You still be clocking them off. You still be clocking that track of them and stuff. So, I mean, hey, I don't know. But, you know, I, I love it. I love that you have that uh, good head on your shoulders. What would you give to somebody who is, that was in a situation as you, like a single mother, and 
who may have a little, but you know, just kind of coming up and going through some of the things. What advice would you give to somebody that is, is looking at you and saying, dang, I'm going through something similar, or my baby daddy doing this? And what would you give her as advice? You could you handle this probably the best you can handle it. Oh, definitely. Um, I would just say whatever dream that you have for yourself, any aspiration. The process is not going to always be the prettiest. You're going to always get judged because they're always going to say, you got a child. You got a, <laughs> like, you know, but them same people that pass the free judgments, they ain't going to help you pay the bills. They ain't going to help you feed that child. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of things that they have to say about, but they ain't going to do shit for you. So whatever road that you want to take, take that road and say, fuck them. <laughs> It's, you can't say it's no better. All right. Well, look, I, I, you know, I, I think that you got a bad rap when it came to him. I think you're getting a bad rap when, when it, from 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 Razor. I think you're getting a bad rap from from Super Saiyan even throwing your name out there as if anything that you have done outside of being an upstanding woman and and trying to get your baby daddy to take care of his child. I think that you got a bad rap. I'm gonna ask this as we kind of go into the closing of this. Do you mind if I turn on the comments? We had the comments all through the whole interview because I wanted to hear exactly what you wanted to say and I wanted to get a clear and concise understanding. Um, do you mind if I turn the comments up to see if anybody wanted to ask something? Or because I know you you live life very open and candid. This yeah. I never yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna turn yeah. them off. We do have a moderator, so keep it cute in the comments. If y'all want a question or something, here's your chance to ask Miss Regan K. Everybody follow her already, but you know, you know, but if y'all don't, this is definitely um, a lady, a smart lady to follow if y'all don't already. Everybody in your mama already do follow. You got a billion followers. Uh, so uh, definitely, uh, let me see what we got in the questions. Um, some people say, oh, look, you got, I respect her so much and she know that for taking care of her son and juggling her business and you know I respect me too. Okay, thank you so much. Um, a lot of, we love hers. Uh, we know she's fine. Uh, <laughs> She says, how do you juggle single parenthood and your business? Um, I started everything out around my son. So um, I just put my, I work like nine to five hours. <laughs> I work nine to five hours. So, I mean, I feel like as long as you're intense, your intentions are good. And then you just figure out how to manage, you know, your time and make sure that you have time for your children. Okay. And I don't think you could go wrong. Period. They're saying, how is the new house coming along? But obviously, we just, she just answered that and they're saying that you closed on it and looking good from what we, from the <laughs> pieces that we sent. I like it. I want to, uh, <laughs> if you need a decorator, girl, you know, you might need that little sissy. Oh, but no, girl, can I see you? I see you. It's definitely looking, definitely good. Girl, that's what the checks get. Let me start my OnlyFans. No shade. Oh, gotta start one. <laughs> Okay. No, there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, you know, us, we got that little flat. But um, so definitely, I really like appreciate your time, um, and definitely coming through and and giving us the insight into your life. I know that's a difficult situation you're navigating, especially being a single mother. And I'm glad that you got an opportunity to tell your story and that we and we know who you are, and not have some some makeup mogul painting your picture and telling your story. Is there yeah. anything you want to say before we get, before we get, get out of here or just... I want to say thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, because, like I said, I have a lot of things that are going on for me and the last thing that I would ever want to come up would be uh, <laughs> you know, well, we had this person that said this about you type thing. I'm grateful that you gave me the chance to voice what really is going on. <laughs> as, as, as always, I appreciate you for taking time out and um, letting us hear what, who you are and what it is and, and, and not let that narrative be painted. Uh, I see nothing but success and so much for you. I know your son is going to come out and it's, it's coming out of what this thing with his father as a champion and he's going to be one of those great black men that changes the world. Watch. I promise you that I see that. He's going to be one of those people. Like, I know that. So definitely. Uh, mother, model, mogul, entrepreneur, influencer, so many hats, everything you can name. Regan K, 
It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> but you too. Thank you so much. <laughs>